Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Way of Life. I'm your host, Gus Holland. Before we begin this episode, I want to inform you that wayoflifepodcast.com is officially live. That's where you can find all social media links. You can listen to the podcast. You can also find merch. That's W-H-E-Y, like the protein. As always, leaving a rating and review and sharing with a friend is the best way to help the podcast, and I greatly appreciate it. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's episode. Guys, not only is the website live, but I've just recently updated it, and I have put a couple new designs in the merch shop. So go, feel free to check that out. That is wayoflifepodcast.com. The link will be in the description below. Today, I really want to talk about fad diets, why they're not good for you, and some healthy, um, sustainable changes that you can make in your lifestyle to facilitate either muscular growth, fat loss, you name it. Um, Fad diets primarily only focus on calorie intake, and they normally target people that are newer to the fitness community or just have um, a less well-rounded knowledge base when it comes to nutrition and exercise. Most of the time, these fad diets target water weight loss and also end up making the user lose more muscle, oftentimes due to the focus on less calorie intake, users experience a diminishing return in the long run. Not only are they experiencing diminishing returns, but they are also almost prioritizing dehydration and a lack of nutrition. When these plans are stuck with for a long time, people end up getting dehydrated or having some form of malnutrition, whether it be um, major lack in certain vitamins or minerals, or just an all-around lack of the proper fuel needed for their specific body type. Now, Healthline.com actually has an article entitled, Eight Fad Diets That Actually Work. That claim is very, um, I guess, subjective in nature. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and list off the eight diets that they claim actually work. Um, number one's Atkins diet, followed by South Beach diet, vegan diet, ketogenic diet, paleo, the zone diet, the Ducan, or yeah, Ducan diet, which I've never heard of, and the 5 2 diet. Honestly, some of those I've never even heard of. Um, but. Like I said, fad diets actually working, that claim is is subjective. Um, normally with a diet, my, my rule is if it has a name to it, um, it's only going to work as long as you stick to it. For example, the vegan diet. If you're on it for long term, almost always, I mean, there are some few a few outliers and I've seen them on different podcasts and shows and everything, but... Almost always, um, unless you're super well regimented and have everything, you know, ins and outs all figured out and you're taking vitamin supplementation and everything like that, you are going to have some pretty major gaps in your nutrition. The general rule of thumb, though, is that the whatever benefits you see from a diet, once you get off of it or change your diet you know, drastically, like you go from vegan to carnivore, obviously the, most of the, uh, benefits from your vegan diet that you saw are going to be altered. Uh, you could gain weight, lose weight. Like it it doesn't matter just with that example, but generally speaking, um, it's called a fad diet for a reason. Uh, the healthiest way to go about it is to find a good window of nutrition that you're you want to live within um, at least for your current stage in life. That's why whenever I'm asked either by clients or just people I know about what diet I suggest or diets in general, I normally tell them that if it if it has a name, you're probably better off not doing it. That doesn't mean to not alter your nutrition at all. You definitely should, and you should definitely do what is best for your, for you specifically. Um, but that's taking into account all of your nutrition, uh, macro and micronutrient level. This 
could be something as simple as say you have like a horrible diet, like you're just eating tons of junk food, sugary sodas, et cetera, you know, um, and maybe you're only eating two meals a day and you're sedentary, then just changing one aspect of that whole lifestyle right there would, you'd see significant improvements in your day-to-day life, keeping the same diet and going from sedentary to mildly, mildly active you're going to see significant improvements. If you stayed sedentary and changed, swapped out the sodas, that's what a lot of people try to do is to swap out the sodas for either sugar-free or like a carbonated water alternative, something that kind of helps trick your mind into being healthier um, and just consuming less sugar. Um, You're going to see benefits from that. If you kept kept the sodas but then said, well, I'm going to slowly... Over time, you know, I'm going to go from two meals a day to three meals a day, but they're going to be healthier. I'm going to go for 20% more protein or I'm going to go for a lower fat or, you know, you're just trying to ease into like, you don't want to, you you don't want to jump into draft drastic lifestyle changes. Um, that's always my advice is if you're, if you can list five things wrong with your diet and lifestyle, try and change one of them. And then once you're comfortable and you're you're in a good maintenance zone with that one, change the next one, and then go after that. After you know, after all, it is consider it's called a lifestyle change. So it's gonna take it's gonna take some time to properly do it. But in the meantime, you can constantly educate yourself, read up on nutrition, you name it. You know, another thing to keep in mind is a good majority of the population has some form of health obstacle to, I mean, this it's sad to say, but it is true. Um, but something that they have to kind of work around or, or work with, um, whether that's form of a type one or type two diabetes prior injury, all that I'm really getting at is that whether it's a fad diet or incremental lifestyle changes, uh, in your nutrition, just to be mindful of filling in all of your nutritional gaps, vitamins, minerals, making sure you're having enough protein for your goals is the main thing. Calories. Therefore, with enough education and preparation, just about any diet can be fully well-rounded and be modified to work for your goals. Also, just to clarify, I am not a certified nutritionist. I'm not a doctor. I do greatly encourage people to find uh, nutritional paths that are the best for them. It is a great idea to contact a nutritionist, contact a doctor, have blood work done, and to formulate something that nutritionally will work for you and your goals that you will also enjoy the uh, way you're eating. I personally always suggest that people do those incremental changes that you know will have some form of positive side effects, such as swapping out, you know, Canceling the sodas or swapping them out with something less sugary or just in general, just eating healthier or eating the correct amount of meals, tracking their um, nutritional intake. That means their vitamins, minerals, and macronutrients, meaning calories, fats, proteins, etc. And just tweaking that along the way. Um, Like I said, lifestyle change means it's for life. You know, it is now I have heard the argument like, Oh, fad diets do work or, or they don't use, they don't even say fad diets. They just say diets. And yeah, I mean, sometimes they can work, but like I said, if, uh, if it's something drastic, like, you know, paleo or a carnivore diet and you lose a bunch of, you use it to lose the majority of your weight and everything. And then you switch it up or you stop that completely and you go back to your normal eating habits. It doesn't, you know, the, the positive changes don't stick around. You might come out with a net positive, but yeah, that's, that's my point. Another thing to keep in mind is typically the more overweight you are, the easier and quicker you will lose the initial weight. Um, this means if you're 500 pounds and you cut out sodas, you know, I mean, you, you can lose well over 20 pounds, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, depending on how much, so how much that excess in sugar had been affecting you and uh, your metabolism, you know, a whole bunch of different things, but somebody that's 
10 pounds overweight, if they cut out sugar, I mean, cut out sodas completely, they might only lose two, three, four, five pounds from that. So just keep that in mind. Um, a lot of people try and make these alterations in their diets and they're like, well, this person lost 50 pounds in, you know, six months or whatever. And it's like, well, everybody, everybody's different. I want to, th- I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, it's been so awesome just since the beginning of this, uh, the start of this podcast, how many people I've gotten to, uh, talk to form a connection with, you know, et cetera. Um, it's just been, been awesome. The number one way to help out the podcast is to share it with a friend, um, and rate and review it on the, whatever platform you're listening to it on. Other than that way of life podcast is live and there is new merch that has recently dropped in there. So y'all should definitely check it out. I'll also be posting about it on social media. I'm trying really hard to come out with merch that y'all are going to enjoy wearing. That's high quality. Yeah, just uh, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Y'all have a great rest of your week and I will talk to y'all later.